So we wrapped up the last part of the lecture talking about why we don't want to give our dogs chocolate. So please, please, please don't don't fall for their adorable eyes and their pouty face and flip your dog an M&M. It's not good for them. It's not healthy. Too much can seriously have some serious health consequences for the dogs because of those properties that you know they can't metabolize those alkaloids and it can lead to some serious health issues. You don't want to, oh, I'll just give them one and possibly cause some problems with your dog. So flip them a piece of cheese or a piece of meat or a dog treat, but avoid the chocolate. All right. So what we want to start talking about now is what actually happens to that chocolate bar when you eat it. So whether it's an M&M, a Hershey's bar, whatever it is, how does this process of digestion work? So this young girl here looks pretty happy to be eating a nice big chunk of chocolate. What's going to happen to that chocolate when it goes into her body? Into any of us. What happens when we eat chocolate and how does digestion work? So the fancy word for this is called hydrolysis. A hydrolysis reaction occurs. What you're doing is breaking down a big molecule. So that word polymer, that just means a big molecule. You're breaking it down into smaller molecules. You can use the fancy word hydrolysis. Or use the word digestion. It's the same thing, same concept. That's what I want you to understand as a concept here. So what we're doing is breaking it apart. Now, in order to break it apart, water is part of this reaction. So if you look down here at the figure, it shows here's the big structure. There's two monomers that are attached together. That's what this structure is here. That's a bond holding the monomers together. Water comes in and it helps break that bond. So it's literally like taking a big Lego structure and pulling the Legos apart. That is the process of hydrolysis. Or when we talk about a chocolate bar, it's a process of digestion. Now, think about the digestive system. Depending upon the food, digestion could start in the mouth. Certain foods like carbohydrates will begin to break down in the mouth. But if you're talking about things like proteins, Proteins will actually start digesting in the stomach. And then, let me get some space here. And then when we get into the lipids, they don't start digesting until they hit the small intestine. So each food group begins at a different location. But carbs, so they start in the mouth, then they continue to digest in the small intestine. By the end of the small intestine, we'll call it the end of the line. Oh. If it's not digested, by the end of the small intestine, it's not getting digested. It's moving to the large intestine, basically turned into wastes, and it comes out. But what we want to be comfortable with or familiar with is, all right, in my mouth, I'm going to start breaking down starches if they are polysaccharides. If the starch is already down at a monomer level, I don't need to break it down anymore. It's already the smallest it can be. So glucose in my mouth doesn't break down. But a baked potato, a french fry, a potato chip, 
a piece of fruit, a disaccharide or polysaccharide, will begin breaking down in the mouth. It moves through the stomach and then it continues breaking down in the small intestine. So that's our carbohydrates. Now for those of you who got a hold of the almonds in your candy bar, you have the protein content. Proteins, they begin digesting in the stomach. So this is where proteins first begin digesting. And it's because of enzymes that are present there that will begin breaking them down in the stomach. They continue the rest of their breakdown in the small intestine. And again, at the end of the small intestine, you're done with digestion. Large intestine is just some additional absorption, but then moving it into poop, and then it comes out at the end of the system. So proteins, no digestion in your mouth, stomach, small intestine. When it comes to lipids, so the lipid component in your chocolate bar will not digest in your mouth or in your stomach. It has to wait until the small intestine. So this is where our lipids first begin digestion, and the only place they get broken down is going to be in that small intestine. So enzymes present in the small intestine break down and digest the lipids. They take those fats, they rip them apart, and then some of them get absorbed. Others move to the large intestine, and maybe it gets absorbed. If not, it gets passed out. Uh, the nucleic acids, we usually don't pay attention to these too much and think about them a whole lot but their digestion location will be just small intestine as well. So lipids and nucleic acids, same place for digestion, right? But the idea here is digestion is just breaking down a large molecule into smaller molecules. So let me put another little text box here and something really, really important. Uh, I'm going to change our font color so you guys are like, yeah, when it's in red, pretty important. And it's got the asterisks. Oh. All right. So the size of the molecule determines if it can actually get absorbed into the small intestine or even into the stomach a little bit. Absorption is based on the size of the molecule. If it's a big molecule and it can't fit through cell membranes, it will not get absorbed. So this is why cellulose, we can't digest it. Cellulose moves through the entire digestive system, mouth, stomach, small intestine, large intestine, and it comes out the other end because we can't digest it and we can't absorb it. So size is important, people. Size matters here. So, all right, so here's the idea of digestion and absorption. Enzymes break apart the nutrients. If they're big macromolecules, if they're large, if they're disaccharides, polysaccharides, those fatty acids, the triglycerides, Big stuff gets broken apart by enzymes. Once it's reduced to the small size, and remember, glucose or fructose is what we want to break a carbohydrate down to. Amino acids is what we want to break a protein down into. And the lipids, those would be the fatty acids, and the glycerol, that's what we want to break the lipids down into. That enables absorption. That enables it to be small enough to go through the cell membrane, diffuse into, and in the case of carbohydrates and proteins, it's going to diffuse into the bloodstream and then get carried wherever the body decides, hey, I need this. So that little amino acid, 
that may go into the bloodstream and then shoo, it's like a water park ride shoo, shoots off and that amino acid may have gone from your small intestine all the way to the muscles in your hand to then get built into a muscle tissue in your hand the cells of your hand or maybe it goes up and becomes part of the neural system in your brain or it gets shot down to your toe and becomes a tendon down in your toe the bloodstream moves it around it's got to be those little molecules it can't move around a big chunk of steak digestion enables it to get reduced small enough to move around all right so that's the key size 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 so in order to do this we need to break this stuff down so all right i'm going to add a box and put some details in here so all right so there we go let me increase our font make it a little easier for all of us all right so let's start with carbs I'm talking about them. They're in that chocolate bar. Cellulose. We can't digest it. Ooh. All right. So carbs, the cellulose all the way through the system and comes out the other side. We're not digesting it. If we take something like starch, yeah, buddy, we like starch. Oh, that's supposed to be a side smiling. We can digest it. All right, so I'm gonna underline this. Amylase. Amylase is an enzyme that will digest starch. This initial digestion of starch starts in your mouth. So up in the mouth, we have a thing called salivary amylase. Salivary for saliva? Spit glands. That's where salivary amylase is going to be found. Let's see if I can get that back up there. All right. So when you eat a piece of starch, your saliva, your, ah, sorry, your glands in your mouth produce salivary amylase, and it begins breaking starch down into disaccharides and eventually monosaccharides if it stayed in your mouth long enough. Now, starch will continue to be digested in the small intestine by pancreatic amylase. So it's a different enzyme, it's an amylase, but it's produced by the pancreas that secretes into the small intestine to then break down the starch and the disaccharides, the carbs in your small intestine, okay? We only break down a small amount of starch in the mouth just because it's not there long enough to be fully broken down. And when the amylase goes from your mouth to your stomach, because of this major change in pH, that amylase from your mouth is denatured in the stomach, which is why we need a second location to produce amylase to add it to the small intestine. All right, so the goal is to take a polysaccharide Turn it into a disaccharide. Turn it into a monosaccharide. And then turn this into ATP. That is what we're aiming for when we talk about the carbohydrates. Okay? All right. So I'm going to pause it here. And then in the next part, we're going to kick off, just talk briefly about protein digestion, lipid digestion, and then nucleic acid digestion. All right? So stay tuned. Come back. Let's see what's happening to the proteins and the lipids in that chocolate bar. You probably have finished by now. Hopefully you finished it. But don't get a second one. Too many calories.